Hello, and thank you for tuning in to the Portland State University Studio MFA Remote Artist Talk Series. This series is sponsored by generous contributions from the Wingate Foundation and the DePriest Professorship Fund by the Harold and Arlene Schnitzer Care Foundation. We would like to start this event by acknowledging that Portland State University rests on the traditional village sites of the Multnomah, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Bands of the Chinook, Tualatin Kalapuya, Malala, and many other tribes who made their homes along the Columbia River. Multnomah is a band of Chinooks that lived in this area. We thank the descendants of these tribes for being the original stewards and protectors of these lands since time immemorial. This series brings together artists, curators, and critics from a variety of disciplines to explore the subjects of their work before a live audience. All of our lectures for the spring term are being held remotely and live streamed through our PSU YouTube channel. Please follow our Instagram account at PSU Studio MFA to learn more about artist talks in the future. At the end of this morning's presentation, we'll be having a Q&A with Paul Lee and the MFA cohort, and we'll also be fielding questions through the live stream chat. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing Paul Lee. Paul Lee, born in London, UK, is a New York-based sculptor, collagist, and video artist who crafts assemblages from used domestic and everyday objects, including dyed terry cloth towels, tambourines, and empty soda cans. Lee's evolving visual language exploits universally understood relationships between use and form. By transforming familiar materials into colorful abstractions, Lee subverts their function and draws out their implicit connection to the human body. He considers these accoutrements to be the abstracted portraits of the person who used them, the synthesis of an object body and an image mind. His recent exhibitions include David Shelton Gallery, Houston, Karma, New York, Modern Art, London, Michael Lett, New Zealand, Jeffrey Stark, New York, Macaron, Los Angeles, Until Then, Paris, and University of the Arts, Philadelphia. His current solo exhibition, Tambourine Heart, can be viewed at Adams and Ullman's Gallery in Portland, Oregon. The exhibition runs through May 22, 2021. Thank you so much for speaking with us today, Paul. You're welcome. So uh, I should start now. <laughs> yes. um, Okay, well, I've been thinking about this uh, idea of a straight line and a scribble, and I thought I would start this talk today as an, instead of starting with an artwork, um, and maybe to get through my beginning nerves, I, I, I've written a little something down to go with it. Um, but it says, um, I wanted to start with this diagram, as I think about this idea a lot, and it speaks how I think about taking ownership of your and seeing with the body. The scribble you might say is expressive, for example, abstract expressionism. The straight line is not, but what goes into making each mark and how you feel when you make the straight line is actually expressive of the body in a different way and internal of the body, I think, because in a way there is a struggle or a task there. So often people speak of the formal qualities of an artwork but things often run deep and are internal there is a physicality and that is when an artwork is at its best so i'm going to start with uh, some slides from a show i, I made in um 2014 called matinee and it was the idea of a uh, cinema in the daytime the matinee and uh, I thought it was kind of appropriate place to start with um, seeing as uh, we're like talking on zoom and it's a screen situation because um, what I, I did was I, I made these drawings of these figures uh, wearing a blindfold and uh, it's kind of like an art school kind of tool that you use to loosen up your drawing style or something like that but it always sort of resonated with me as something that was a really kind of magical thing so um 
I drew these men that I had sort of not met and known in the past, and uh, I uh, paired them up with the cinema carpet. And um, it was the idea was that in a way that I was in imagining these people and in the pairing it with the cinema carpet that I was like filling myself with like a screen light or a cinema light or something. And that I was actually a screen. So, or in a way that was casting the light on these figures. So that was what this show was kind of based on. I, some of the characters just ended up, I'd erase or paint over some of them if they, uh, didn't sort of speak to me, but I would get these different characters just arrived. And um, it's in, it was interesting to me because it was sort of extremely sort of like personal and intimate, but at the same time, it related to ideas of the screen and technology. So I like this chap because he seems like he's very sort of above it all or something. And almost like a snob or something. It's like a his character I, I, I really liked. And this character felt very kind of uh, tough and rough. And so there were all these characters that were coming out, but they were sort of, it was the idea that I was like lighting them up by drawing them or something because I was like a cinema screen. So I think that that's kind of interesting in the relation to these times that we're in. Um, this was my first show in New York at Massimo Ordiello. Um, it was called Reservoir. And there's a continuous theme of water in my work um, with the cans and the washcloths. And so I called this show Reservoir in a way because it was kind of like this kind of, it was my first show and I had all this kind of stuff inside me that. Uh, I wanted to sort of, that just sort of came out and it was, I felt like it was this reservoir of stuff that was enabling me to sort of share all these ideas or something. And so on the right, there's a abstract kind of paintings made of uh, wash, dyed washcloths. Uh, I call them paintings, but they're not really like paintings. So more assemblages, I guess. And uh, I was using sort of color as a coded kind of thing. Um, and then there's some canned sculptures and other works made out of uh, different materials. Uh, the gradient piece in is made of uh, six washcloths in on the back in the back, and um, that was kind of a really important piece to me because as the uh, as it went as it moved as it moved towards the top of the sculpture, it's it's gets blacker. And it was really interesting to me that this kind of idea of darkness as kind of a material or something, like this idea of like the more the material was used, it became, because they're for cleaning, you know, it became darker and darker. But somehow it talked about this idea of light as, as, as matter or something. And so the black towel became really important to me. And, and then... The, the different colored towels, like a blue towel, for instance, being at once water and sky and how that spoke to the, the process of a towel, like uh, it absorbs the water and then it sends the water off into the atmosphere as it enables it to evaporate. It's like a station in between kind of the water and the, the sky. And then the green towel, how it was, represented grass for me, you know, like how, and then how you think about how grass kind of, how that has a relationship to water. It's kind of the water under the ground sort of thing. So it would just became, it was a, it really helped. That's where I, I think I really started to build my language of colors was through the, was through using the towels in a way. And I started to learn about color and the different things it could mean and how I could build a language. Um, so I was using the photocopied images that I would wrap around soda cans. I, I kind of wanted to allow there to be kind of a life force inside of the photographic image in a way to sort of, um, to give it life or something, to try and give a photograph or a life. Um, 
So here we have a hand that's a picture of a hand and it's wrapped around a can that is crushed. So the, the image is interacting with the object in a way it's, cause, it's causing the object to do, so, like to do something. And, and I, I took the black and white from the black and white photography and the white was kind of representing kind of, you know, like a, the, the white part of the image and the black was representing the black part of the image. And so it was kind of deconstructing a photograph and, and, and through deconstructing, adding to it in a way. So by adding by taking away, I guess. Um, so here's some more examples of some of the washcloths. And, you know, the little, the orange semicircle is literally like the sunshine inside of the washcloth. It's like a, you know, quite sort of a literal representation of, of that idea, but a washcloth almost like acts like the sunshine in a way. It's like a, it's an object that dries something or something. So for me, it was interested, interesting to insert an image into an object that talked about its function. And function is a really sort of something I'm really interested in. Like I use functional objects all the time generic kind of functional objects and that function I, I think about as kind of representing a a truth uh, or like a real like uh, you know if something does something or can do something it's it has a purpose or something so a tambourine is there for making noise um and I, I really like the tambourine. Like, I, I like to sort of think about things to have different meanings at the same time. That's sort of sort of keeping your existence open or something in a way. Like that reflects that. And here, this is what I was thinking about screens again. And uh, the white area is a screen. And but it was like taking the tambourine. That's an object that could be used by everyone. And it's kind of this kind of very diplomatic sort of instrument and then putting it on the wall as a, as a picture and somehow the kind of desire within that it just sort of spoke to me in a way or something I, I was think the towels came I was working the tambourines came after working with towels and I was thinking about the body and I kind of wanted to represent the body some way and the, the idea of touch and the, the tambourine I think I was in a kind of a, an antique in New York, an antique store in, in New York one time. And I saw a tambourine that was like an old tambourine that was like painted on or something. And I think I remember noticing the kind of the nails around the edge and then thinking that really looks like a, like an, how people used to stretch canvases with the exposed nails around the edges. And I think it just sort of stayed with me and then it just became part of my vocabulary. So in talking about expanding on the function of an object, I became really interested in the idea of a towel as a sack. So it was almost like taking what this object does, it like contains something and exaggerating it by turning it into a sack, you know? And the podium represents kind of a, a point of desire or a place for desire or to put a desired object onto. So I was turning these towel sacks inside out over the podiums and then putting the light, the light bulb into the sack and the cut the different way the colors interacted, like the blue light bulb on the yellow in the yellow sack was like water and the red light bulb in the purple sack was like partially water was partially there and and there's a yellow light bulb in the blue sack so that represents the sun so it was like bringing all these different meanings together and having them exist in in one space and the large piece on the right I was sort of thinking oh like it was interesting how how the colors of the towels were like gendered in a way the pink towel and the blue towel and so I made this piece with a pink and purple and a blue towel and and I made the cut into it because I kind of was thinking about this idea of 
the water flowing back out of it or something, but like uniting all these like different ideas of like gender together in a way and sort of making them one thing or something. Um, and so again, it's like a, a sack that, of a towel, but it's like a spilled sack. So the, the water is absent, but present in other ways and more than one way like it's present it's like there to me there's like water moving through those rocks but even though it isn't there you know but the water becomes the light or something that happens when the towel sack is spilled so it's this idea of like water and light interacting and mixing together and um i, I think there's something about water that you know i think it's this idea of purity and cleanliness and flowing and all those kind of things really that I think anyone probably thinks of if they sit by a river or something like that. So um, then I was cutting the centers of the towels away and sewing them together and creating these kind of sort of um, visual ladders in a way. I mean, this one's blue and it really spoke to the, the, what I spoke, said earlier about the idea of it containing the water and then the water evaporating up into the sky. And this piece sort of contains that idea in a way, the simple blue. And um, I like this idea of layering different ideas or layering different spaces in the imagination. So when the viewer is interacting with the work, they're kind of like not looking at one plane, they're looking at multiple planes. And I don't know if that comes from this idea of um, the politicized body or whatever, like growing up as like a young gay person and sort of being um, a certain thing or something like, there weren't that many role models. There weren't that many ways, people you, who, who were you? Who could you be? Like, what even were you? There was like, it was weird. And, and then all of a sudden, like, but you don't want to be defined by that because that's been taken away from you and politicized and used as a political tool, you know, to win elections or to oppress people or to get votes. And so in a way it's like, freeing yourself from these kind of boundaries that like society puts on you or something. It's like, you are like a, a, a layered person and you are like many things at once. And I think that I try and sort of, I don't, I don't, I'm not really trying to, but I think that that's an aspect that my work talks back to me and tell, and, 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 and says to me, this is, this is the com this is the conversation I'm having with the work or something. It's like a an open kind of expansive conversation or something. So this was a, a purple towel, and I made little four purple bath towels, and I made little cuts to allow the water to sort of flow back down. So it's like the water is is is, is like kind of evaporated up, but in the purple towel now it's flowing back down, and it's the blue is mixing with red and and desire is kind of becoming this kind of free falling thing or something um I, i've thought about the bath towel and the washcloth and the hand towel as each being their own sort of element in my language uh that the the washcloth is kind of draws on the body and moves around the body in this certain way and then the towel you know does something different. And then the hand towel is very much like um, related to the hands. And so I try and think about these kind of different elements in a way. So then I started to want to expand, like bring the tambourines out into the space and like have that kind of, they weren't screens anymore. Like I wanted to bring them into the sunlight or bring that kind of interruption into the viewer's realm in a way. And I started doing these by using the 
the diameter size of the tambourines. And that's how I made the square that would go over the face of the tambourine. And then I started to deconstruct that square and build into it and twist it and turn it. And it almost becomes like a handle or something in this one. Uh, there's a few of them that I made around this time where it was almost like they became handles or fallacies or this one is kind of, I think the yellow for me is very much speaking about sunlight and the tambourine is like a moon, but so it's just sort of bringing these different sort of poetic ideas together and where it's cut off is at the horizon line. So opening up that space and opening up the, the square that would normally, you know, just fit over the certain cover and hide the tambourine in a way. Here's another piece that's actually this, this exact same form, I, I think, just on its side and flat. So it speaks more to water. And um, this was a show I did at uh, Macaron in New York in 2010. And um, there's two videos here, and one is made out of uh, strips of towels, different colored towels that I sewed together. And I ran them over a light box and then I filmed it. And so the towel became a film, which in a way speaks to that idea of the towel becoming like a projector in a way, like it takes from the body and then projects into the space. So I made this film with the towel, the light would come through the holes and it became like the sunlight was kind of the light from the light box was became like rain. So it, it was almost speaking about the functionality of the towel in, a, in, in this kind of new way, but like reversing the towel and, uh, I did these five different colors and each different color that had, had a different relationship to, to the, to the function of the towel. And then the other slide, the other side is a, is a shower curtain. And I made a film with the shower curtain and the, what was interesting to me about that was that the plastic curtain acted as it looked like water so the the screen was actually becoming fluid in a way so there's definitely like lots of stuff to do with screens in this work and things like that I guess things blocking you and blocking what you can see and moving around in that sort of space so this is kind of the tambourine's flat again but there's like a compression thing that's happening. Like the space is like moving in, it's moving in toward like abstracting that kind of physicality. And this one is very, feels very mo like a moon in the sky to me, a moon at night, but the, the moonlight is interacting with the daylight in the room with the sculpture. So fiction and reality, interacting with each other is kind of something that I'm interested in because that kind of relates to sort of desire and ideas of des feelings of desire we have and um, and the reality of that desire and things like that. So, so I think about, uh, this is made of washcloths and it deals with kind of the positive and negative space a lot and the uh, letting the light of the room into the, into the washcloth. So this kind of old light is reopened up. It's almost like an opened, reopened wound or something to talk about it in a more visceral way, uh, for lack of a better metaphor maybe, but where they overlap, it, the washcloth is intact. Whereas, in, in reality, that washcloth would be um, too thick, two layers of washcloth thick. So 
I don't know, it's somehow kind of playing with the positive and negative, the light of the space of the past and the light of the space in the present and trying to encapsulate and, and contain that light of the past and bring it into the present and in a way acknowledging the past in the present. So I think that that's, the piece is called Turn Time Inside Out. So. And then the stair piece is like an example of where I was thinking about the hand towel and the washcloth. And I wanted to make a stairway out of the hand towel as a way of speaking about the functional, the functionality of the hands and then the imagined space of the fit, the stairs and how that goes from the hands to the feet and how that speaks about the whole body and in an abstracted different way again, like something we know to be true, the function of the hand towel and then a drawing basically of a stairs made with that object. And then the little black box at the top is a washcloth, but it's like a, I don't know, I always think about when I would come home from school, like when I was a kid and like run up the stairs to my room and just go to the stuff in my room. And that was where my imagination was. And oftentimes actually that was a uh, playing computer, computer games and stuff like that. So um, that's how I think about that piece. And then the other piece is made of uh, four hand towels. And it was the idea that you could, it could spin, that central part would spin on an axis. And then in thinking about that spinning, it kind of, again, sort of own the, the light of the past and the light of the present. Um, I, I think the past is just really important important to me to sort of like acknowledge that in a way like historically with art and gay artists and my own past my own personal past you know like accepting that accepting that truth of who I was where for many years maybe there was kind of a denial or not or, or a, an unwillingness to accept my own physicality in a way because you know, I, I knew that I was a gay person, but I didn't know where to put that or where to put those feelings or how to feel about it or and things like that. So that's that piece. And then this is a, another piece uh, that talks about the functionality of the washcloth in a way. It's the landscape and then containing and then and flowing. So it's speaking about the function of the washcloth, but making it into sort of like a climbing frame or something like something you can interact with in these all these different ways. Um, and then these were the kind of, I think the last pieces I, I made with the black towel, this was for a show in uh, Los Angeles I did in, um, 2016 I think and this is again the kind of expanding space of the towel is made of bath towels it's expanding and growing to it like a big tower but then it's collapsing that tower and it's reopening that kind of air the space that the towel was functioning in the past has kind of been reactivated in a way and then the other piece is called lung the piece on the uh, left with the small washcloth and the different size boxes made of uh, one respectively one bath towel and two bath towels sewn together and it's called lung because I was thinking of it as internalizing that space of breath and that space of air and it was this idea that you would like move through that space of breath and air from the past and get to the washcloth, like dig it out sort of thing. And uh, so that's what I was thinking about those pieces for. And then 
I sort of started to sort of free up the tambourine and uh, I was still thinking about touch and stuff and the lines on the tambourine were very much about um, the idea of, uh, you know, a different kind of physical interaction with the tambourine. Like it was like a line you could trace your finger over and uh, as opposed to sort of like an object that would be touched or something. So I, I guess there's a, you could think of, as thinking about the tambourine as the body, like you could think that there's like a, almost like a, a violence to that in a way. And I never really think about that, but like there's, um, I just think about it more as a kind of a joyful sort of stand in for the idea of touch, but I don't know, maybe there is sort of like sort of fear in there as well, you know? Anyway, the red to me is very much this kind of urgent part, like a color of urgency, but it's also a color of desire. It's a color of like a, the light outside of a photo processing laboratory, you know, or um, it could be a warning or a red light for like a, a place that's sort of like CD or something. So I've actually been doing these new works that are very kind of red based. And I have actually been thinking about them as um, nightclubs uh, scenarios. And they, they all feel like I remember being a young person and going out in London and like, I think a few times on my own, although not very often, but I would have very different friends and stuff, but just that whole thing of going to like a gay club and experiencing this kind of place was so kind of otherworldly. And I think has just really sort of stayed with me as kind of, um, it was a place you really wanted to be, but like you didn't really want to be at the same time, but you were lonely and you wanted to meet somebody, but like that maybe you wouldn't meet somebody there. And I get, it was all before like, um, dating apps and things like that now. So I don't really know that world, but I know the sort of, you know, there's a more physical, real in life version of that, I guess. And so I started to sort of then create the canvases higher than the tambourine. I wanted to open up that space between you moving towards the tambourine. So even though it's still inside of an image and in, in an imaginary space, the, 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 the space of the image is expanded and opened up. And I actually think of this one as kind of like the light from the past radiating the rest, the purple part, the lavender part of the painting. Um, and these were all from my show in, at Macaroni in Los Angeles in uh, 2016. So I really, uh, I like corners in, in paintings, which sort of obviously makes sense, right? The idea of a corner in a painting because you're looking at a picture but then you have these two planes that are coming together and it's kind of this different kind of language that's all of a sudden inside of a painting or something. I mean, this doesn't use false perspective in a way, but it's still very much a corner and I don't know, these are very much to me like moon paintings of moonlight and um, landscapes in a way. And then I was thinking about the surface of the actual tambourines, because a lot of the times I would stretch canvas over the tambourines. And this one's more like the, the earlier tambourine sculptures with the objects on the surface. This is kind of that form turned on its side. And I was trying to sort of expand the skin, the surface of the skin and bring that into the painting and think more about that kind of surface of the actual tambourine, which I used early on and then I came back to. And so I was sort of mimicking that a little bit, but I was also painting 
and bringing that idea of the painted skin in together with the kind of the real uh, skin of the tambourine and sort of trying to like open them up into the space and explore those ideas. And then I kind of went back and started to sort of break down the actual paintings and open up the space inside the paintings and want to go inside those and, and block them out. So you were looking through the glass inside the paintings and really, I guess I'm, it's like, and then I, I started to mix together the, the large and the small painting, the tambourines. And I was thinking about that as kind of different stages of life, like a younger self and an older self or, you know, an adult and a child or, thinking about the, the, the tambourines, uh, these different relationships and perspective as well. Like it was a different way to think about perspective, the smaller thing being in the past and the, the larger thing being in, the, in the, the present. And then I sort of started to sort of make some more cans again after taking a break for a while. And, uh, bringing in different elements. Actually, in some of the newer ones that I was making, I, I, I did a self-portrait and I was in, really interested in bringing together the photographic image with the painted image and putting them into the same object. And uh, I actually started to put little rosy bits of sort of blush cheek on the photograph and on the painted self. So the moment where these, the painted image and the photographic image met were, 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 were the same was, was through this like kind of sort of small little bit of pastel on the, on the cheek that was making them blush. So I wonder if in a way that that kind of speaks to my relationship with this image in this photo that I've used for sort of 15 years in, a, in different forms. Um, I found it, that image when I first moved to New York and I, I can't really decide if it was like a surrogate for my myself or an idealized figure that I kind of longed to be or felt like I had to be to be loved or if it was just, I thought he was handsome or something. It, it's kind of this mixture of things. And sometimes it's like good not to overthink things or wonder why too much, but. So this is just myself. There's a tennis ball inside the bubble wrap. I, I've used different sports balls with some of these sculptures. Uh, the tennis ball is like the same diameter as the can and the, the light bulb and they, it kind of works as this kind of like, as a representation of landscape or something because it's like this found objects that one would find in, in the landscape, but then the green of it is like the grass and it's also like this projectile and I don't know, taking that and, and putting it inside the bubble wrap and it's kind of a false cord that you would pull for, and, the, and the string would light up, but the, the string doesn't light up the sculpture. It's like pretend. So it's taking functionality and messing with that in a way, I guess. Paul, you have about five minutes left. Okay, I better uh, move forward for a few. And... I uh, made this show in quarantine. I was thinking about the political nature of these colors and the purple being in the middle of them at the same time as like thinking about them as kind of water and desire and thinking about the purple as kind of like 
representing like gay people or LGBTQ people, or, you know. So there were all these kind of different, and it's called the Kiss, which I sort of named it after that little Brancusi sculpture that's a carving of the two people kissing. And uh, so this, this show I called was called Divided. And so in a way I was sort of taking that, those kind of political colors and, but at the same time, they were very much within the personal framework. So it's just that idea of like the politicized body, but then expressing something personal and intimate, but it's also expressing something outside of the self. And, you know, so that was a kind of a, an interesting show to me in a way. And then the washcloth piece on the floor, it's made of washcloths, it kind of representing two rooms that are separate from each other, but they're not, they're sort of in, you know, they're, they're, they're sort of separate, but together or something. And taking that kind of intimate space and opening it up and allowing it to exist in the in a community or in the space the gallery being part of the community or something and then sometimes i've like thought about the idea of the table and what the table represents and this the tam one tambourine is supporting the leg of the table and the other tambourine is on the table so it's this idea of the support and the desired space kind of being together, like the, the table and the thing, the desire and the thing supporting the desire or allowing the desire to exist, existing together as a, as a complete thing. And then I started to mix the towels and the tambourines together. And the, the large tambourine has the print from a towel on it. And then I was thinking about water in the past. So I put the water was the black ink and it was the idea of the water from the past. So reactivating an object from the past into the present. And then this is my last slide that, I oh know there's a couple of collages, but now I've started to sort of bring sort of painting onto the surface of the tambourines and think about that and using the screen from a, uh, screen doors it, it, with these sculptures, which has offered me kind of this new kind of sculptural, structural element that I can use. And it was also during quarantine when I was just using like scraps from around my studio and all different things and expanding on that language. But the screen is back, but in this kind of new way. And it sort of really ties in to the ideas of the screen from before, you know? This is a different angle for that sculpture. And I think I'm running out of time, but um, it's another one with the screen. And this is it's the image is reflected. So the water is there again, but absent. And this is kind of a good one to finish on because it's the tambourine completely deconstructed. Uh, the, that the canvas is, taken from sort of a, a, a part of a sculpture I didn't use and it's laid onto the black paper and it becomes like a celestial object and the images in there mixed with it and the, circ the smaller circles are the tambourine bells. So sound is now becoming a really kind of part of the visual language. So it's this idea of using the sense of sound in an image to me is very, a way of expanding upon an image. And then the green circles are canvas that have green ink uh, that I poured on from a watering can. And that was the uh, kind of ties to this idea that I think about often of how the rain kind of forms the landscape. And when the rain falls, it draws on the landscape. and. The idea of it being green rain to me is kind of bringing this idea of rain together with the landscape and sort of making them a complete single thing. So that is my last 
slide. <laughs> so I don't know how we're doing for time. <laughs> right on time. Thank you so, so much for your wonderful presentation, Paul. Um, that was really amazing. Um, at this time, we can open it up for the Q&A. And I wanted to see if anybody has um, any questions uh, right off the bat. And if not, I have <laughs> several myself. Do you want to start or should I? Please go ahead. OK, um, thank you so much. This is your work is so expansive and so simple at the same time. You have a lot of dichotomy going on and it's just it's it's breathtaking. Um, I'm really glad you're talking about the sound because um, tambourines are such a joyous thing. I mean, they you you touch them and they and they make sound. You you don't have to do that much. And when you were talking about that one piece in particular, the red and black with the rectangle and desire, and and I I could just feel the quivering. You know, that just really struck me. But my question goes way back to um, when you said that you stop when it starts to turn in on itself. Can you just talk about that a little more? Well, actually, someone just asked me that question today on Instagram, and I was like, wow, I never really thought about that. And uh, I think it's just when there's like an internal dialogue within, the, when the piece starts to sort of have an internal dialogue, really. And uh, that means that it has like a, an insight to it or something, <laughs> which is the most like what happens when you meet another person or something uh, like and you under, you they start to have that you under, start to get to know them or something and I feel like that is kind of as a human being like the most human thing you can maybe experience is just sort of like being with other people or something I don't know it was something I just thought of thought of this morning and I was like actually that makes sense so I'm, I'm gonna add it to what I was talking about with the with the little line and the scribble, and uh, it was maybe that was a harebrained idea to sort of start off, but I, I just wanted to sort of talk about this idea. The, the I don't know. There's like different ways to look at things, like and um, yeah, I don't really know what I, that turning on itself. I think that like it just. I don't know. I don't know what that meant, but it seemed to make sense to me. So I thought I would share it today with in my talk and think about it some more. <laughs> I mean, what do you think? <laughs> well, and I like I like what you just said though about um getting to know another person and you you yeah, there's something there for me too. Thanks. Well, I, but I think it, maybe it's also about getting to know the self, you know, which is maybe more maybe makes more sense actually because you're making this thing and it's so coming from you and then all of a sudden you recognize something in it that is like telling you something that maybe you already know that's buried in your intuition and your subconscious that and your intuition I've always thought is kind of everything you've forgotten but you know and so that's kind of the resource. That's like the reservoir that we all have, you know, is like everything we've experienced, but we've either forgotten because we've chosen to or just can't remember, you know. So I think that actually that makes more sense in terms of what I mean by that statement or sentence. <laughs> Statements may be too strong of a, <laughs> a word. <laughs> I had a question. Um, your work seems to be very expansive, but it's also building and evolving off of itself as you're working through this big body of work that you have. I was curious, um, what do you want your audience or viewers to kind of retain after viewing all of your works or just a body of work itself? Um, well, that's interesting. Like, because I think I don't really necessarily. I'm not trying to like tell anyone anything or make someone feel a certain way or I'm just want to create kind of this kind of op 
or open visual kind of dialogue with the viewer. And, you know, what do I want them to take away that they can be creative or as well if they're not, or, you know, the, to see something and think in the world and think about it in a different way that they might not have done before or I don't know just I think to create a more actually kind of like it's interesting now you think of it talk about it because this idea of creating like kind of a more open space in a way I'm sort of creating a space for myself through making the work. And I guess maybe that's what I'm trying to do is just create a space for myself that's an open space that I can share with the world and, and, and exist in the world without kind of, you know, and accepting myself and who I am in the world, you know? Although, you know, so I guess it's just like a poem, writing a poem. Why would anyone share a poem, you know? to share something. Thank you. I love how wonderfully personal that shaped into me. <laughs> um, hi. Um, I am uh, curious about your creative process. Uh, it seems to me that you're working with um, color or you're interested in color and space and exploring those formal elements and so I was wondering I guess it seems to me that there's like maybe an element of play and spontaneity when you're working and and I was wondering does um your process start with that kind of play with with materials and colors and then the associations come along the way as you're working mm. Well, I think there's a mixture of, um, for instance, when I was making the collages for my show at Amy's, um, I started uh, painting all this paper red, you know, with a roller and, and then painting over it with acrylic. And I knew that that was the space where I kind of wanted, it was a desire space that I wanted to create. So I, it was like, it was a red space, you know, and, also, I, I wanted it to, it was like there was a sense of urgency I was feeling. So in a lot of ways, there's kind of a mixture of like a formal choice and a kind of personal guttural kind of choice, you know. But in a lot of ways, that's kind of what it is to be human, right? We don't exist in a bubble on our own by ourselves. We exist in kind of a society and a society is kind of a formal structure. and so in a way, like, uh, there is a lot of play. <laughs> I'm changing the, I'm moving, I don't know if I'm making sense, but there is a, with these collages, for instance, and I think I'm moving into new territory a little bit with what I'm doing and I'm excited about that um, because I, there was such a sense of play with that work and I was allowing sort of pieces of paper around the studio and laying things down on it and, coming back the next day and trying to do something and then putting it down on a table and it's spilling and me being like, ah, oh, don't touch that, leave that, glue that down exactly where it is and all this thing sort of. So that was really an exciting kind of way to get through the pandemic as well, I think, because there was this kind of like constant rhythm of painting this paper and then looking around the studio and my studio is really messy. And I've been lately, like, I've been thinking about it as almost like a, it's almost like I'm foraging in the studio. So, like, the studio has, like, become like a, a forest or something, and I'm foraging in it. And I love that idea and that metaphor, you know, that idea of being in a kind of natural, the studio being a natural space to me is, like, I, I like that idea. I like, I like that. But I do need to tidy up. <laughs> so. um. If I can follow up on that, so was the process of making the washcloths that you showed us the, that were colored, like the one with the sun within it, was that process then different from what you were describing with the paperwork? Um, I think that that was also a very intuitive process, but I was sort of 
thinking about nature and suns and moons and water and grass and desire and I was thinking even some for some of like the the washcloths that I was using like red circles in them I was thinking of, about equating the washcloth with a photograph and this idea of this thing that moves over the body and makes a kind of a record of the body and so in a poetic way not in a literal way obviously but although you know the body moves in the out landscape and then comes in or whatever and you know so I guess it's all sort of in a way it's all sort of about kind of like let, letting light like light in or something into the process like I, I'm looking I've got my bio here to refer to and then the show there's a, a show called a uh, nocturnal seeing in the dark a path of light that does not cross others which sort of like ties into the the cinema drawings in a way and sort of like thinking about this pathway within your head and it's sort of like just inside of you or something but I don't know but it crosses it crosses other people it crosses other pathways in the imagination and like again like I like this idea of like ha like like having different creating different layers and different layers of seeing or something because you know we don't you know society tries to confine us and we all do live in our boxes but like we need to like the idea of being a free body you know like a, a, a person then you can experience the world in its in the, in in the best in a in a way that's wonderful and magical and and life you know light so it's a struggle to do that <laughs> yeah yeah thank you but being an artist is a struggle you know like it's a struggle man right? so um thank you paul i have a question um like throughout your presentation, you talk about desire, particularly gay desire, right? Like that kind of comes through in a lot of the different things that you do. But through like some of the, the materials that you're using, particularly screens, but also like formal elements that you're incorporating in your work. I also started thinking about like, like queer repression and like how that's also like a narrative that, um, that often does not necessarily get talked about in relation to like queer embodiments. And I was just like thinking about if he had anything to say with regard to that. I was, I was also thinking in particular about tambourines as being like a very like, um, it's, it's widely incorporated in like church choirs. <laughs> it's like, it's such a weird, um, it's such a weird instrument. So I, I, I was just, um, I was just wanting to know what if you had anything to say about that but then um later on i also have a question from the chat room well um the tambourine i was thinking uh well uh, oppression is definitely some uh in the work you know um and the kind of acknowledging it is a way to free oneself from it you know um and history is so important like especially if you think about like recent art history art history like that you can see that kind of language of or that kind of evolution of um uh acceptance coming through you know like andy warhol was like bullied by johns and rauschenberg or they didn't like him because he was too gay you know, and then you've got like someone like, I don't know, like Agnes Mine, who's a really important artist to me, who, whose works some might say are completely formal, but to me, they're just completely poetic and transcendent. And uh, um, so I kind of, I'm interested in acknowledging that work in my work as well, you know, but also the character, the image of the, from the cans that I'm using is a face from the 50s that is from like a uh, like an erotic 
gay magazine you know that wasn't a porn magazine it was just like naked guys and uh it um which i actually found out from when i first moved to new york uh, like a a a friend had had one and it was just like this really amazing beautiful kind of little magazine and like i was able to go and get get one myself at this in in it the, like there was a cardboard box of them in this kind of bookstore in houston uh, not houston um in uh, on hudson street and um and it just i don't know it was kind of like there's the past there's the repression and like now it's kind of like moving through me into this present or something through my work you know and i sort of think that the these collages are like the last time that i'm going to be using that image like i think it's sort of like but then i was just like thinking of this like little project and i'm like do i sort of like i've got another idea for a project but i'm to do with it but it will be completely unrecognizable and i'm also sort of making a painting of that face now that i want to use in some painted works so it will still be kind of present but just different i don't know maybe the the, the photographic image doesn't uh resonate so much as much with me anymore or something like i'm moving somewhere or else or something i don't know but i don't know if i answered your question there i might have just rambled on <laughs> yeah you did um <laughs> yeah. and then um Brad Baker asks, I'm sure it's a bit cliche, but I'm curious if there are any particular artists that help inspire your art. Uh, well, that's not a cliche. I think that's a nice question because like I say, what referring back to just the last answer, it's like that history is kind of really important. And I think that Johns and Rauschenberg and Warhol and you know Agnes Martin and those kind of gay artists you know like oh and got Robert Gober and and then some more there's you know more contemporary artists uh, Jack Pearson was a influence on me actually he actually is the reason that I live in America and I'd written my thesis about his work when I was at college and that's how I happened to be at America so in America so my physical place in the world was actually kind of altered by an art essay I wrote so it kind of feels like really um you know I don't know it kind of makes sense to me or something and and that's what I was talking about that kind of character in that magazine image as possibly like being some sort of like idealized surrogate of like a of a of a young gay self or something because in a way i sort of i'm okay i arrived here because of pictures and i don't know it was just really interesting to me like that kind of overlap of fiction and 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 reality and so you know there's a lot of you know those are kind of the main i guess artists i would say felix gonzalez torres uh, um Oh, Derek Jarman. Um, um, I'm sure I'm missing out some ones that I really admire, but I'm just not able to think of them right now. <laughs> um, but there was quite a few there, I guess. <laughs> I kind of like this idea of sort of like, uh, uh, yeah, no, let's carry on. No, please. <laughs> no, keep going. <laughs> Keep going. Well, I just think this idea of like uh, there's this one collage in in Amy's show, and uh, it's uh, I think it was in my slideshow. This one, and uh, it really reminds me of that kind of canvas of Warhols that's like the Marilyn, where the little Marilyn's in the middle of the red canvas. And I was like, is this like queer in Warhol? And then I'm like, how can you queer Warhol? But for Warhol, that figure was Marilyn Monroe, you know, which is like interesting in terms of if you think about queerness, you know, like how kind of 
that representation or gay representation wasn't really there around and gay men were like looking to kind of like these female mo like movie stars and like Hollywood and that's you know I didn't they were constructing their identities in this way and you had drag coming up and I don't know it was just really interesting I don't know so I was thinking about like what does how does this like speak to that kind of like is this guy like my kind of Marilyn but he's really like a he's just a he's just a gay guy that's like from a magazine from the 50s like it's sort of like so this idea of like thinking about those artists and like que que queering them you know which I know is a conversation that's happening right now that is happening where gay artists are sort of like quit you know queering the past or whatever is kind of like a is kind of an interesting space you know but at the same time we have someone running for president that was a gay man and so it's this kind of really interesting time like really I don't know it's interesting time to be a gay artist and like to be an artist in any way for anyone you know it's an interesting time uh, to be a black artist or a female artist or a straight guy artist I guess is even you know so I, I don't know what I'm trying to say but like it's interesting when you're making something like I really like Myron Stout he was a Provincetown artist and I spent a lot of time in Provincetown and he was introduced to me by another artist and it's been really interesting like learning about his work and then I was like making a painting and I was like oh this reminds me of Myron Stout and so I just called it honored to meet you Mr Stout like it was like this point where I'd met someone in an artwork like by making art like and in a way that that was probably like his formal influence on me but in another way it's like I don't know it kind of happened by you know it's just like happened by accident so it's like having this conversation with the past is really important you know I don't know I mean it was really interesting moving to New York and meeting all these gay people and gay artists and not really knowing about a gay art history that was in England, you know, it was like in America where I was learning about that. So it was great to come here and, and, and experience that culture and be around those people, gay people and, and all of those things. So, but I forgot what the question was now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I actually have a, a question for you. Um, I'm curious about the life cycle of the materials and themes that you're um, using, uh, namely the tambourine. You, uh, I'm wondering if the, you're working towards a point of resolution with that or if it is going to remain unresolved. It seems like it's moving through some sort of uh, evolution as you know, in this current exhibition, you're deconstructing the tambourine. Yeah. Um, and as, and I, I'm also curious about the image of the ideal man. Mm. Juan, do you know who he is? And did you ever find that out? That would be really interesting. Um, two, the same, the same thing about his identity and what that represents to you and, uh, you said that you'd started replacing his image with yours, um, but he's still, he's still, uh, you still use his image as well. Is that correct? And I'm wondering yeah, well, what I'm... that means to start coming forward and using your own identity in your work. Right. Well, it's interesting actually, because it was just kind of like, I thought it was maybe just going to end up being a folder on my laptop, but I, I wanted to sort of, scan an image of my images of myself in and sort of superimpose them over his image in a way like it's just a sort of experiment to see how I, that made me feel but um I don't know who he is I and I don't know who the photographer is um and I don't actually have a copy of the magazine like I wrapped it in brown paper because I was traveling overseas and like I didn't want to get my bag searched and like someone to find it because it's just like, I don't know, but it was really funny because magazines like that, they would put in like paper bags and it was kind of like how you would like discreetly walk up, go away with your magazine or whatever. But um, 
I don't know. Because I, 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 I don't know if putting the self in, which I was kind of exploring with the cans where I used a, a painted image of the self, is necessarily a way of putting myself into the work in a in a more in a, in in a way a stronger way or a more communicative way. So I don't really know where that is going to go, but it might go somewhere after I've once I've finished painting from this image, and I've just been using his ear that I printed onto canvas, and I tore them up into little squares. So I have all these little squares of his ear on canvas and they're kind of being sewn onto the surface of the paintings I'm making. So in that way, the tambourine is, is still sort of present in the works because I've been using bits of screen with spells acting as a mask. And so you get all these little circles on the screen and that, that's representing the bell now. The bell is kind of completely disappeared and the tambourine is just going to be a circle that's on the canvas that's masked out and pulled away. So it's just the, the, the tambourine surface is going to be blank canvas in, uh, is part of the painting. So, and then the, the ear is coming into those and I'm thinking about moving away from the tambourine, but I don't really know what is going to happen or how that's going to conclude. And I don't feel like it needs to be conclusive or inconclusive. It's just because in a way that that is kind of almost a better space for it to be. Um, Cause I'm, I'm also, you know, I want to move away from this image as well. So, cause I almost, I feel like it's kind of this push and pull between abstraction and figuration, which is really interesting to me because like abstra abstraction feels like the most liberated point or something. And then the, the photographic image feels like the opposite of that or something, or this image of the painted self seems like the opposite of that because it's the self reflected back. Um, so I, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking about that and I'm interested in it, but, and I'm sort of thinking like I want to get rid of the tambourine, but it's sort of like hovering around. I don't know if it will become sound or, in if it will exist in some different way and then using this image of the of, of, of the young man's face I sort of sometimes I've wondered like I wondered if like if he knew about this like it would just probably be super weird for him right but like I always think like did this guy die in the AIDS epidemic you know like that's what I always think of because it's like this young man that I, I don't know, that would have I, 15, like 30 years, 30, 40 years later, like in the AIDS, when the, like, I, I think I often think of him as like, I, I, I kind of just assume he's dead, you know? So it's like, um, so that idea of a ghost or the ghost of a kind of like a, of a, his ghost or something is, sort of present or something and it's sort of like bringing him back and saying like this is part of me let's kind of like I don't know I just do feel like it's it's part of like my language or something but it's not a word it's not a sentence or a paragraph it's an image you know so. thank you and I have one more follow-up question about the tambourines more specifically the way in which they're used and um, to complete the larger canvas pieces. Uh, I was wondering if you see those as sort of like a pressure release valve uh, or if they act as more of a sort of a disruptor or an intruder um, in, the, in the frame, in the rectangle. Yeah, I kind of think of them more as like, they're kind of more liberated actually. And that like, uh, it's kind of creating this kind of like, almost like they're kind of the biggest things I've ever made. And they're like, it's sort of putting the tambourine into like a color abstracted landscape that is, like I said, the most kind of an abstracted color space is kind of a liberated space, right? There's no, I don't know, like it's like, so I sort of do feel as though they are kind of like, 
a free a freeing up even though that it's different in each one like there's one that's black and it's a square and so the tambourine the rectangle is being compressed and it's in the corner and it's like you know it disappears kind of into the painting so it's still that kind of push and pull between liberated and oppressed you know and kind of there's definitely like a push and pull there and i think that um something that is interesting or the way to think about them is that they the viewer is like implicated in that kind of unresolved space because the viewer could touch that tambourine and then the viewer can which is a physical thing but then the viewer can also like look at the kind of path that that tambourine can go in or the space in which that tambourine is tracked and so the viewer through their imagination is like going through their imagination in a path to their hand and the whole physicality the imagined space and the physical space are interacting with the image space the timber the sculpt the object space you know which is kind of a true space and a a real space i don't know it's just it's like trying to find like um it's about accepting what like i think it's just accepting what one feels and being in one's truth or something and sh and and the experiencing that with the viewer or something i don't know it's, thank you so much funny I, I i was thinking about like oh, i don't actually really want to talk about like what i'm doing or what i do because it's like i don't want to sort of like confine it in this way in this language in this kind of other way of processing things like the conversation or whatever but I'll be all right. I think I'll be all right because I, I, there's stuff that I don't know what it's going to be yet. So I'm just leaving that over there. And then I'm talking to you about what's already kind of happened. So it's okay. <laughs> I totally understand. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to ask uh, if anybody else has any other questions. Okay. Um, well, thank you so, so much, uh, Paul. Um, that uh, concludes our artist talk for today. Um, please join us next Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time for a presentation and Q&A with artist Natalie Ball. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Paul. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, thank you.